So, this is yet another Hatstack Mike video about Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah, I don't really hide the fact that I may be a bit obsessed with this series. And like, it's not just me. Sonic fans are known for being extra passionate about this franchise. I'll just keep this positive and leave it at that and not go into the weirder aspects of the Sonic fandom. So what is it about the Sonic series that makes it so special anyway? How have people managed to stick with this franchise after so many blunders and missteps from Sega? Well, the answer is probably different depending on who you ask. So this is all just going to come from one dude with a stack of hats on his head. The first thing I'll mention is a really simple one, but I just really like the character designs in Sonic. Sonic has such a striking design that's really appealing both to kids and to adults who maybe haven't quite grown up yet, like myself. He has such an iconic design that anyone could recognize him right away just from seeing his silhouette. He just looks really cool. And it's not just Sonic. Other characters in the series have great designs as well. Tails looks adorable. And Knuckles looks badass. The series has such a distinct style that you could look at just about any character and be like, yep, that's a Sonic character. There's a good reason that Sonic is so popular for fan art. These characters are awesome. Again, just keeping things positive here and not going into the other side of the fandom. But yeah, outside of the characters, one major thing I think is really appealing about the Sonic series is the universe itself. Right from the start at Green Hill Zone, you can tell that this series is all about surreal environments with its own unique style. Just look at Collision Chaos from Sonic CD here. Look at that funky ground pattern. Look at all the bright colors and unique shapes in the background. I just love it. And this even carries over into some of the 3D games as well. Speed Highway from Sonic Adventure just looks so awesome. I'd love to visit this city. Although I don't know if I'd really want to drive on the roads here because I'd be all like, whoa! Grand Metropolis from Sonic Heroes is another awesome city that looks really cool and not something you'd really see out in the real world. I want a hover car. Other games like Sonic Unleashed went for a more realistic style, but still has that Sonic charm with the loop-de-loops -loops and everything. Then there are games like Sonic Lost World that went a little too far with the whole surrealism thing, to the point where it's like, eh, look, you're running on food. <laughs> I'm not a fan of this. I think it's lame. One topic I'll touch on briefly is the music throughout the series. The 16-bit classics are known for having some of the very best chiptune melodies out there. And then you've got that hard rock in Sonic Adventure, dumb yet awesome rap songs in Knuckles stages in Sonic Adventure 2, more orchestral pieces in games like Sonic Unleashed and Sonic Lost World, and of course I have to mention Crush 40. Open your heart, live and learn, escape from the city. Their stuff is so great. I mean, how many platformer series has a band closely associated with their music? I think that's just Sonic. There's so much variety in the music of the Sonic series over the years with so much good stuff. Some of my favorite songs include Ice Cap Zone, Sky Sanctuary Zone, Chemical Plant Zone, Stardust Speedway Bad Future, Speed Highway, Power Plant. Okay, I'm gonna stop myself right there because I could spend all day listing Sonic songs that I love. It's an integral part of the series, for sure. Alright, I think it's time to get into what really makes the series special, above all else that core Sonic gameplay. There's just nothing quite like that fast-paced platforming style of Sonic. Rolling down hills and launching yourself from inclines, bouncing off of badniks, and blazing through loop-de-loops -loops and other environmental features. It's pure Sonic the Hedgehog. I love playing games like Super Mario World, Kirby's Adventure, and Donkey Kong Country. But there's nothing quite like playing Sonic. And as I mentioned in my Sonic 3 & Knuckles video, each level often has their own set of fun gimmicks to make them stand out. And things just got more cinematic and badass when the series went to 3D. I love the crap out of Banjo-Kazooie, but this game doesn't have you boarding down streets, barreling through cars, and leaping off of ramps. Super Mario Galaxy is an amazing game, but it doesn't have you running down the side of a giant building as you collect stuff along the way. Also, as I've mentioned in previous videos, the level design in most of the mainline Sonic games is excellent and really well suited for this type of gameplay. 
The level design and gameplay go hand in hand as to why people like me keep coming back to these games after all these years. And that's not to say that you don't need fast reflexes for the other platformers, but you still don't quite get that same sense of speed. There are games out there that are heavily inspired by Sonic, and have a similar style of gameplay, and while I really enjoy these games, it's still not quite the same as playing Sonic. Really though, you should maybe check these games out. They're pretty cool. To maybe give a bit more context here, let me tell you all the story of how I was introduced to Sonic. It was just a few months after Sonic 2 came out, so probably around early 1993. My friend from school invited me over to his house to play video games, and it was there that I got to see the wondrous, magical Sega Genesis system. I knew that Sonic and the Genesis were a thing, but up until that point I had never truly seen him in action. He had just gotten Sonic 2, and when he turned on his system, wow, I will never forget that moment. Right from the title screen, Sonic just looked so cool thrusting his fist out. And then it started. All of the aspects I mentioned, the characters, the graphics and art style, the music, the gameplay and level design, I was instantly hooked. It was all just amazing. And you know what's funny? I wasn't even playing as Sonic. My friend was all like, I get to be Sonic, you can play as Tails and follow me around. I mean, we were still little kids, and little kids are just like that sometimes. So this was all just for me playing as Tails, where the screen wasn't even following me. When I did get to play as Sonic not long after that, oh man. So yeah, at that point, I needed a Genesis system as soon as I could get one. After doing a crap ton of extra chores for a few months, the time finally came when my parents got me my very own Sega Genesis. My older sister had an NES that I played pretty often, but this was the first console that was truly mine. The first two games I had for it initially were Sonic 2 and Sonic Spinball. Yep, that's right. I went with Spinball purely because of how cool the box art was. I still love how the cover of that game looks. Sonic running past lava with that smirk on his face, and a super pissed off Dr. Robotnik shaking his fist at him. It's still one of my favorite pieces of video game box art ever. And you know what? I really liked Sonic Spinball. I'm a bigger fan of this than most other Sonic fans, to say the least. But yeah, it wasn't long before I got Sonic 1, Sonic 3, and then Sonic & Knuckles right around the time when it came out. I think that was actually one of the very first times that I got a new video game within the first month of its release. And the rest is history. Well, maybe I didn't cover every single aspect, but hopefully this video has given some good insight as to at least why I'm such a huge fan of the Sonic series, and have stuck with it for all these years. Seriously, I've lost interest in other series with subpar releases that weren't anywhere near as bad as Sonic 2006 or Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric. But after those came out, I was just over here like, oh well, hopefully the next game will be better, as I continue to buy more Sonic merchandise that I don't need. The Sonic the Hedgehog series is just special. I've shared my history with Sonic and why it's such a special series to me, but I'd like to hear what all of you have to say. This series has gone through many changes over the years, so what appealed to me may not be what appealed to you. Maybe you got into this series through the games that I'm personally not a huge fan of and just enjoy completely different aspects of it. Leave a comment and share your experience with the Sonic the Hedgehog series. Thanks for watching, and I hope you all have a hat stack and good day!